When I came to college, the reason I came to BU was to do medical ethics, um, and specifically Jewish medical ethics. And when I came to Dr. Grodin, I really didn't know very much about Jewish doctors and the Holocaust. Through some wonderful help of students at Boston University, I was able to try to put together in one place all the documents and all the histories, all the stories, all the interviews of Jewish doctors in the ghettos and camps during the Holocaust. One of the big reasons that I really believe in this project is because I think we have a lot to learn from seeing people who had to make really difficult decisions. The physicians that were involved in the Holocaust found themselves in every place that uh, other Jews found themselves, but they had a special obligation to try to help rather than to be bystanders. I think it's important that people know these stories. Dr. Gisla Pearl was a gynecologist during the Holocaust in Auschwitz. I think her story was the most poignant for me. We were given no medicines, no instruments. The fever-ridden patients shivered on the bare planks without blankets. What hit me the most, and I actually ended up doing a lot of research on the subject from the Jewish law perspective, was the issue of aborting a child. She aborted children in their eight and a half month. There was just no chance of survival and the mother would be killed. So mothers that somehow hid their pregnancy until that point, she still aborted those children. No one will ever know what it meant to me to destroy these babies. After years and years of medical practice, childbirth was still, to me, the most beautiful, the greatest miracle of nature. I love those newborn babies, not as a doctor, but as a mother, and it was again and again my own child whom I killed to save the life of a woman. You have zero resources. You know that the fact that you are trying to save somebody else makes you less likely to survive. But she did what she had to do, and uh, she was able to give hope, hope in the place of no hope. And that hope did, in fact, cause a lot of her patients to heal. God was good to me. By a miracle, every one of these women recovered and was able to work, which, at least for a while, saved her life. The letter that Dr. Elks wrote to his children after he had them smuggled out of the ghetto, I think, is the text that stands out most in my mind. Dr. Elkanon Elks, he was the head of the Judenrat in Kovna, in the Kovna ghetto. A lot of doctors were placed in these positions of power uh, within the ghettos especially, whenever the Nazis were doing actions, so picking out people who would live and who would die, he would stand there for hours and hours and try and negotiate for each individual person to be kept alive. I am the man who with my own eyes saw those about to die. With my own ears, I heard the awe-inspiring and terrible symphony, the weeping and screaming of 10,000 people, old and young. And so he wrote this letter to his children that he would had smuggled out of the ghetto. He just writes about how the only thing that brings him and his wife any comfort as they're sitting starving to death in the ghetto is fantasizing about how his children are going to grow up and the fact that they will grow up and who they're going to be. Our innermost desire is to see you again, to embrace you, and tell you once again how close we are to you and how our hearts beat as we remember you and see you before us. As we stand here at the very gates of hell with a knife poised at our necks, only your images, dear ones, sustain us. For me, I think what was so compelling about this project was that specific medical ethics, how Jews during the Holocaust made these decisions, how their professions influenced them. When you look at how healthcare providers tried to help these people whose bodies were being violated in such horrible ways, I think you get to the, the core of what being a healthcare provider is about. It's about how do we care for other people and how can we be compassionate toward them, try and help them as a person and not just as a patient.